Hi, my name's Katie Parker and this is the demonstration for the necklace made from this kit which has the 6mm beryl gemstones, the microfaceted uh, morganite gemstones and the chrysocolla which is a 3mm faceted gemstone. I'll show you some of the other pieces that I made with this kit just at the very end. I'm just going to move the, the chrysocolla out of the way for a second. The kit also includes a rose gold sterling silver, rose gold plated sterling silver findings pack. So that's got everything you need there to make all the jewellery that I've made and probably a little bit more as well. And it also includes a threading pack. So the threading pack has um, the beading thread, monofilament and beading elastic. So what I'm going to show you today is how I made this um, threaded gemstone necklace so it's got some texture it's got some um, different texture within it because we're using three strands for a beading thread and then coming together again so it's a nice simple design but it gives especially with these beryl gemstones a, a nice kind of texture to it and it, it, I think it's really pretty especially for spring for this time of year okay so let's go ahead with the demonstration okay so I'm using a slightly shorter pieces of thread just for demonstration purposes because it would take a, a long time to thread. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to work out what, what length you want your necklace and then add probably about six inches to it because we've got some dimension, some extra width taken when we, we take these little sections and also just enough to, to be able to add your, your clasp and everything as well at the end. And we want three of those. So... What we're going to do is just initially to start so we're going to pop all three of these threads together like i said mine's shorter at the moment and you should find that all three pieces of your beading thread will go through so they might not all go through at the same time but they definitely go through and there's plenty of room on there for those to, to move around and such so once we've popped one on, we're just going to leave that there. We're going to create the clasp at the very end. So it's just going to leave us that little bit of flexibility. So just be careful you don't pull any of those out just to start with. Now on each of these, we're going to start adding a microfaceted. So it's take me a second just to find the hole. There we go. A barrel six millimeter and another microfaceted. So we're going to add the same combination to each of these threads. So that's one done. So I'm just keeping everything nice and flat. Obviously we've not connected this at the end yet, so we want to make sure nothing's folding off the other end. So adding one of each colour. So try and alternate the colours a bit. Don't be too precise about it but just try and spread out the colours along your necklace to give it a really nice design to it. So, and then this is the last one. Just adding a microfaceted and then another barrel and another microfaceted. Okay, now we want these to group together. We don't want them to be so close together that they're, they're too bunched up, they're too tight. So we want them to be quite relaxed so that it's going to flow nicely. And we want these, the rest of this strand, to keep together nice and smoothly, not too many twists and turns, as little as possible. And as you can see, at the, at the ends, they are kind of the same length, but I've kind of graduated them a bit so each one's slightly different. It just aids sort of threading them through afterwards. So you can pop one of those threads in, the other one, and then the last one in. And then just making sure they keep nice and smooth. You'll notice if it does twist and turn too much, it will tighten up. And we don't want it to tighten up. We want it to be nice and smooth and relaxed. So we want them to come together just so they sit separately from each other, but have got that little bit of space. So there is a little bit of movement on those uh, microfaceted ones and then we just do the same again and we do this all the way along so I'll just do one more set and then I'll show you how we uh, finish off the necklace so adding alternate so a microfaceted a barrel and then another microfaceted onto each strand and just making sure they stay nice and separate no don't let them twist together so 
kind of separate them out in the way they want to go because the more twisting you have the, the more unnatural your necklace would sit so we want it to sit really nicely and naturally and just alternate those that little combination the same each time finding that drill hole you'll find every all the gemstones in the kit fit beautifully onto all the threading materials okay so bringing those all together again so we've got the one bead here and then we've got a set of that microfaceted beryl and another microfaceted on each of those and again bring those together get them kind of parallel next to each other and run your fingers down and then you can start threading on your next gemstone onto all three strands and then just gently place them around about the same distance apart so that it's really quickly quick to build up but it'll give you a lot of um like I say definition and um texture within within your necklace so I'm just going to continue on and I'll join you when I'm about here Okay, so once you've got everything threaded and you know that everything's sat exactly where you want it to be, uh, what you need to do is, uh, this is going to be more of a bracelet length, is pop one of your crimp tubes, which have got plenty, plenty of room inside these tubes that come in, in part of your kit, uh, over all three of the strands at the end. So we're going to start adding our, our clasp now. So that's on all three of those strands. Now what all you need to do is take one of those strands away to one side, pop on your jump ring, which is going to be part of your clasp section. I'll just turn this around slightly. And then just one of them, we don't need all of them, to come back through, just like you would do when you were doing just a single strand, to come back through the crimp bead. And then we need it to come through that bead too. So just take your time, just pushing very slowly and gently. So I can see that's come through now there and what I tend to do is grab my pliers and grab that and pull that through. Now you want it to have a loop at the end there so it's got that loop there's a little bit of movement for your jump ring to move around in but you don't want it too loose or and you don't want it too close so just just so it's got a nice loop and it's got enough enough space to move around in. Don't worry about these we'll be just snipping those off we only need one for to, one to secure our have a bracelet in, in place, our clasp in place. Okay, I would just say just before you add your your jump ring, just make sure it's fully closed. And that will help the longevity of your jewellery. Okay, so now I'm going to take some crimping pliers. Now what you'll see with crimping pliers is that this, if I close them there, this one is kind of a kidney bean shape. And this one at the top is more rounded. So the first one I'm going to use is the one that looks like a kidney bean. Some of the other way around, it depends what pair of pliers you've got. But there's always one that's kind of got that indentation in the middle and it's got, got that bump in the middle. And that's the one that we use first. So what we need to do is making sure that the jump ring's out of the way. We're going to pop our pliers down and onto that middle, sorry, the, the one with the bump. And give it a nice squeeze just nice and gently but with you know a nice firm grip slowly and give it a nice squeeze now what you'll find is now one side is a dome shape and the other side has got this little groove inside it you can see that the light in there now what you need to do is turn it so the grooves facing upwards and pop your pliers underneath and pop your pliers into that more rounded space so into that rounded space there and just very gently encourage that little crease down the middle just very slowly to come together and what that will do is it will fold that in half and it kind of makes another little bead so it's made kind of a smaller tube so you've kind of halved it now that is super super tight now that's that's not going to go anywhere so what we've done is we've folded the tube in half and then crushed it back together just very gently you don't need to be too heavy handed with it and then all we're going to do is we're going to take our snips and run it down the side here and cut off these two making sure 
we're not cutting that loop off. We don't want to cut that loop off. We're just cutting off those two unwanted pieces of thread. And that will just leave us with that loop at the end ready for it to add the other half of our clasp to. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same at this side. So I'll do that again for you. So all these threads through the crimp. We just need to take one of those threads, doesn't matter which one, just whichever one you feel. We're going to pop that through the loop on our clasp, that one thread, ignoring the other two that we've got out there at the moment. Then this one that we've got here, that is going to come back through the crimp and through the bead until we can see it come through. I can see it there. Then I'm going to take my pliers and grab that little bit of thread. Where's it gone? There it is. So pulling that thread through. There we go. So you can see that, that loop getting smaller. So just leaving it so it's got a small loop so that that clasp has got space to move around. Just before we do this, just taking a look down the rest of your bracelet, making sure everything's still in place, still exactly where you need everything to be. That's very important before you do this last crimp because this is the point where we can't change anything then. So then again, we're gonna pop it in and we're going on that, that middle, middle one on my pliers, the one with the notch, and gently squeezing that close. And again, we'll have that dome shape on the top. And then if I turn this over, we will see that groove on the inside. You should be able to see the light shining on that now. And then we're gonna pop our pliers underneath and back in and just very gently on the more rounded one, just very gently squeeze that in and that will bring that back in nice and secure and it's more like a little bead now, like so. And then again, all we need to do is lose these two. So I'm gonna go down one side and the other side because that's the way it's situated. So I've kind of run the blade of my snips all the way down so it's gonna snip off as close as possible. And then the same at this time, making sure we don't snip the loop that we actually want. Snipping that there. Okay. So, and then what you're going to do is you're going to find you've got two of these now on the inside. So we want to snip those off as close as possible to that bead as possible. So snip this one off and snip this one off. And then our bracelet is almost finished. So we'll be able to fasten it there. And then to pop a crimp cover on, which these actually come inside your kit as well. We're gonna, a crimp cover is like, it's like a little bead that's got an opening on one side. So what we need to do is I sometimes do it this way. I'll grab it with my pliers and then place it over the bead. The little bead we just made okay so placing it over and it's always very fiddly so I'll do it with my fingers hopefully there we go so placing it over that little bead there we go so it's popped over and then what we need to do is just very gently and I do mean gently especially when we're using sterling silver just kind of keep moving it very very light pressure we don't want to dent it or anything very light pressure, just moving your pliers around, very gentle squeezing until that forms a perfect bead, which is gonna cover up that little bead that we just made. So, and we can't really see the join in that anymore, so it's all nicely covered. And again, the same at the other side. I'm gonna use my fingers. I would normally use my pliers, but I tend to ping off sometimes okay, let's just pop it around that side and there we go so it's on there now and then again just popping your pliers in very gently just maneuvering it around bit by bit until your crimp cover is your crimp is covered and then it's just a matter of fastening your bracelet so like so, and there we go, bracelet made. 
So these will move, they'll move around a little bit, which gives it an extra, it's a bit, bit like mindful jewellery where you can kind of play with it and fiddle with it. So, so that's how to make, the, this is the bracelet and I've shown you the, the necklace. So now I have a set, like so. So there's enough in the kit to actually make all of this. You could make the necklace and, and the bracelet. And then you've also got that beautiful chrysocolla where we, where I made a bracelet, which is a ladder weave. And then it's got the microfacetid over the top of that. And then probably one of my favorite pieces from this kit is actually these earrings. So that's a beady bead made with the chrysocolla and then it's got the barrel and the, the morganite at the, at the top there. They're absolutely, I think these are my new favourite earrings. So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and I will see you again soon. Thank you.